Hey guys, it's Melanie from MelanieKM.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, you know, I was scrolling on my phone and I came across this pillow uh, from Madewell for $125. And sometimes when you see when you see things, you think, oh, I could make that. And by the time you buy everything, it's just as much money as if you bought it. But 125 bucks. And I thought, oh, those are flying geese. I could totally make that. Uh, so let's make it together. Uh, here's the pillow. I actually reversed the, the color scheme because I wanted that kind of rich orange to be the geese. All that to say, this video is going to walk you through exactly how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do the flying geese and make it exactly like this if that's what you would like to do. Um, but this is going to be a great video for putting an invisible zipper in your pillow. So we've got an invisible zipper here right in the seam. So whether or not you want to do this exact kind of motif or this front, um, I'll show you, you know, exactly what to do. It could be a one piece of fabric or another, um, you know, whatever design you'd like. And then we can put this invisible zipper in and wham, new pillows. All the details will be in the description box down below, full pattern instructions on my blog. And yeah, let's jump right in. I'm going to show you how to make it. All right, I'm getting the front panel ready to go. Um, and what I did, these are my flying geese. They measure four and a half by nine. And then we sew them all together in whatever way you would like. And then I am using a piece of scrap batting and then just a fabric that is not gonna to be too strong of a color so that you can see through it. For the backing, this is gonna be on the inside of the pillow. So I have a bolt of this gray, so I use that. Then what I did was I went ahead and I got started quilting it. So I quilted each triangle. So starting here, up, all the way down, back up. That is how it looks in the Madewell picture. And then what I'm gonna do is use some chalk and a ruler and we're going to do some other lines here so let me show you that so the size between this is just over an inch so if i line this up here you can see we've got one two three and like an eighth or a quarter almost a quarter so we get, we need to do like one inch and then a little bit because we're going to do two lines I'm going to show you two different ways to make your lines. One, and just a little more. So you can use chalk. Make your line that way. Or you can use one of these bone folders and run it along the edge. And you can see that crease. And then you can quilt along that crease line. Okay, so either method, you want to quilt going up, pivot, back down, following these lines, and then it will look like this. So I'm using a cream color thread, and that's how I'm doing my pillow. Of course, even if you just want to go around that triangle, that is sufficient enough quilting to make this really pop. So it's up to you, but that would be how you would make your lines. And you can take this over to the sewing machine and sew those down to get it quilted. Okay, my front panel is done and you don't have to do this exact pattern. You don't have to quilt it. You can just pick one solid piece of a fabric that you love as well. So take this tutorial and really customize it to your own. And my pillow is going to be 20 by 20. So I have a 20 by 20 pillow form. Our front panel is measuring, you want it to measure one inch smaller than your pillow form. So it's 20 by 20. That means you want to do 19 by 19. And this because we have these corners here, this is intentionally cut this way so that this will end up in the seam allowance because we're going to use about a half inch seam allowance and that way I won't cut off my corners. Um, but if you were not needing to take that into account, then you would just trim it all the way to the edge and this will need to be 19 inches. We have a backing, which is just a 
simple kind of linen blend cut to the same 19 inches. And then you need a invisible zipper. This is the 12 to 14 inch. You want to have some room on the sides so we have a nice corner, um, but that is the size for the invisible zipper. So the invisible zipper is going to look like this. It's got that nice, uh, very subtle feature. That way you can still wash it and it's really easy to put in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up our zipper. If it's really wrinkled, you can iron it, but it's not completely necessary. This is our wrong side, so you can see that zipper pull. So the right side, we're gonna place it wrong side down, pick which side you want for your pillow to be, doesn't really matter. So we're gonna line up the edge of our zipper tape and the edge of our front panel and pin it. You can also use these Clover Wonder Clips as well. So now we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and you can kind of see where this, these teeth kind of, you can kind of fold it over. We're gonna switch it out to a zipper foot and we're gonna put a stitch right as close to these teeth as we can, but not, you know, not so close that we're not gonna be able to open and close our zipper. So we want it close and not too close. And you can see here that getting next to that zipper is going to also ensure that we in, in keep those corners intact. Okay, so get your coordinating thread, put a zipper foot on your machine, and then let's sew this side on. Back stitch. So you can see I'm going right next to the zipper teeth, but I'm not covering the zipper teeth and keeping it consistent. So be mindful of your zipper pull. If you can get around it, just kind of do your best to get around it. Or you can backstitch like I'm gonna do. Just backstitch, cut your threads, pull that zipper up, and then restart it where you were. Backstitch, and continue. Okay, now we need our backing, our back panel. Make sure that everything is lined up really well. That way we're pinning the zipper onto this side and it's not gonna get us off too much. So we're gonna line up the zipper tape and the back panel and pin that into place. Okay, so now I have my back panel here. Make sure your right sides are together if you have a a piece of back panel fabric where that matters, right? Okay, and we have the zipper all the way open. And we're gonna just do our best to get around the zipper pull. Um, and then we'll go back and fix it. So make sure it's nice and straight. So I'm just gonna do my best around the zipper pull. That actually went pretty well. If you need to fix it though, and, and um, that does, you know, you're having trouble getting that close, that's okay. We'll keep, I'll show you how to fix it. All right, then we're gonna sew this one all the way down. I backstitched at the end. Okay, now go take a look at the top of the zipper. I'm gonna get that a little closer actually. So you can close your zipper and you can see, hopefully, where my stitch kind of flares out a little bit. All right, so close your zipper and just look at it and make sure that it's looking really good. It's all attached, looks solid. Okay, so now we're gonna place right sides together and if you want to pin, you can. Okay, so the next thing to do is we are, you know, I want you to look at your zipper and see where the end is and then that's where we're gonna start our stitching. Okay, if you need to make a mark, go ahead and make a mark. So we have our end here, so I know where that is. And I'm gonna change the needle position on my zipper foot. No need to switch it out. 
Okay, now I'm gonna get as tight as I can. So I have my zipper foot here. It's gonna go right down here and where this little notch is. And I'm gonna start it where that mark is, where the end of the zipper. All right, and then we are gonna use a 5 8 seam allowance to go all the way around. I'm actually going just under 5 8 too, and I'm just double checking in here that I'm not getting my, my, those corners of my triangles. You can see it's gonna be a perfect fit there. So mine, um, mine is a scant 5 8 Okay, I'm back around almost to the beginning of my zipper. I need to make sure that this zipper is open. That way I can flip the pillow right side out. Pin that open and then make sure that our zipper stays lined up properly. We do the same thing that we did at the beginning. Feel where that zipper stop is and if you need to mark it. So we're here. Okay, so we need to come all the way down to where the zipper is going to start or stop, depending on which side you started with. That way we can go all the way to that mark on the other side. So you can feel with your finger where that zipper is and you're going to go just on the other side of it and backstitch right where that mark is. Okay, we got down to the mark, we're going to backstitch. You can see right where that is. Cut your threads. Okay, now we're going to trim our corners. So don't go up to the stitch, but it'll just make it so that we can pop those corners out a little bit better. All right, now let's pull it right side out. All right, I'm just going around and inspecting to make sure that all of my triangles look good. Yay, love it when it turns out nice. Now, the last thing that you need to do before we put our pillow form in, you're going to want to switch your machine to a zigzag and zigzag the um, inside of the seam. Not a huge deal if you don't want to or don't have a machine that will do that, but this will be washable that way. All right, so then go ahead and put your pillow form in there. That helps you kind of like fold it in half. And then make sure that those corners get all the way in there. This will be a nice plump pillow, which is why you want to do the smaller sizes. Make that front and back panels a little bit smaller than your pillow. That way it fills it out really nice. There you go. Pillow cover, zipper, invisible zipper. Looks really nice. Can't even tell that it's there. You can wash it. It's really professional finish. Wash it, gift it. Enjoy it with your family.